Okay, so I was asked a great question about what happens, uh, we're recording now, uh, what happens with feeling out illnesses and what's actually happening with feeling out illnesses. And I, I'll do that, I'll try and do that with uh, illnesses and also sort of put in pain as well. Um, and I teach the field of feelings and it seems kind of obvious when you're feeling out anxiety or fear or guilt or shame that it's more like a vibration. So if you, whip, if you allow the vibration, it just dissolves away. But what's actually happening if you've got an illness? Well, an illness for me, this is how I sort of see illnesses. When, there is a, when there's a lot of repressed feelings, when there's a lot of repressed, especially the dense repressed feelings are shame, uh, guilt, uh, fear, uh, and then higher ones are like anger and pride. But when there's a, especially a lot of shame and guilt, um, uh, these feelings, if there's too much of this repressed feeling, especially if you're like an addict, like every time there's a feeling you eat a donut, or every time there's a feeling you have some alcohol, or, every, or if you're a relationship addict, every time there's a feeling you get a new relationship, whatever it is, then you, you build up this huge volcanic, sort of, I call these repressed cylinders of, of feelings. And when there's too much repressed feelings, it's like, and these feelings symbolize stuff, like shame, I don't deserve to live, Guilt means uh, I deserve punishment. So these feelings have like um, an energetic message in them. Like guilt means I need punishment. You know, that's the vibration of guilt. <clears throat> so when they show me, you know, I don't deserve to live, you know, I, sh I shouldn't be in on this planet. So as these feelings, now, and you, you, st you keep on using, putting on the Netflix, the donuts, the alcohol, the drugs, whatever it is. <clears throat> so they, they build up like a vol volcano and at a certain point, it's because there's so much vibration in there they have to manifest. You know, they pick up these collective, you know, in the, in the collective uh, consciousness, yeah, Jung talks about it, in the collective consciousness, yeah, but I, I would say, you know, from doing Hawkins' work, there's like a collective wave band from shame, where there's all these thoughts from the collective, which are in the ether, and people who are vibrating at shame, they just pick up these collective thoughts, you know, and people who are in, in guilt, you know, they're going to pick up similar collective thoughts from the radio band on the collective from guilt. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, <clears throat> I, I come from an addiction background, you know, uh, so, you know, there's never enough, never enough donuts, there's no, you know, you can, they, you can never get thin enough, you, you can never get successful enough, there's never enough money. This, this endless feeling of whatever you get is never enough. And, you know, all the addicts are like, they're all talking about whatever it is, but there's not enough of it. If I could get another biscuit, if I could get another donut, if I could get another alcohol, if I could get another relationship, you know, whatever it is. So it's like, a, you know, it's the same vibration we're picking up from collective. It's slightly different variants, whether it's food or alcohol or drugs. But anyway, when you're one of those dense ones, like shame and guilt, it's like, okay, so it has to manifest. I mean, it can manifest, you know, the lighter ones are probably going to manifest as behaviours. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, you might get, uh, actually, my, my, own, my own history is quite a good example. Like, I started off with food addiction in, early, in, my early, in my early years, and then I kept doing the food addiction. So that was a bad behavior, an addiction behavior. But after I did that for so long, so many years, I don't know how long, uh, 30 years of just eating the donuts, never feeling the feelings, then it's like the, the repressed feelings get so heavy that now you have to pick up something more heavy than a behavior mm -hmm. to, to crucify yourself from the collective. So it's not enough just to try and kill yourself with donuts. Now you're going to pick up like illnesses from the collective consciousness. So, and the, the severity of the illness depends on how much, if you've got extreme shame and guilt, you're probably going to put uh, very fast life-threatening illnesses. For, for, if you're at the bottom levels of shame and you've got too much volcanic shame and guilt, you'll pick up things like you know, fast cancer or, or AIDS or, or, or something very, 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 very punishing, very, very severe and almost life, you know, quickly life-threatening. If you're probably got less repressed feelings, you're going to pick up something a little bit less, because you don't deserve anything, you don't deserve it that bad, because the, the repressed feelings say, oh, well, it's not that bad, I don't deserve anything life-threatening very quickly, but I'll pick up something mild, you know, like, uh, so for me, you know, I picked up kidney failure, uh, which is not life-threatening, but it's miserable. Mm -hmm. And the gout attacks, horrific pain in my feet, <clears throat> asthma, I can't breathe to be alive. 
So these are like, you know, one level up from, you know, the real killer killer, fast killer illnesses. So, and then, um, okay, so that's the thing about how you get them. And then, and, and the severity of them just depends, you, will give you an indicator of what kind of, if, how severe your illness is and how much repressed feelings you've got to feel out for, for you to release and cancel the beliefs. But, um, so what, <coughs> because, you know, <coughs> if you can see that this whole world is energetic, there, there's actually vibrations and, you know, like emotions, like fear, guilt, shame is just a vibration. It's kind of subtle, isn't it? But an illness is something that's manifested as concrete. Yeah, so it's like a, it's like a congealed, it's like a congealed vibration. You know, it's no longer loose like fear or anger. It's like congealed into, it's manifested into like cancer or, or um, or eczema, or uh, you know, or kidney failure, like an organ's gone, or, or you can get other things like uh, pains, aches and pains, or back pains, or neck pains, or whatever it is. So, as you, as you do the feel the feelings on them. You know, of course you can do counselling, but actually feel the feelings will release an illness without having to do counselling or beliefs. Because what you're doing <clears throat> is you're reversing the process of how these things get, get stuck into. Remember that an ego is just the experiencing of a separation, yeah, through identification with thoughts and feelings which are manifest into behaviours, the body and all of that stuff. I don't know if it makes sense. So, to undo to undo the experience of separation, if you feel out all the feelings and don't attach to thoughts, you're actually undoing the process of the experience of separation. So, <clears throat> like if a, a belief is just like a congealed form of vibration, which is like, yo, you know, like I have eczema, or I have neck pain, you know, so, or I have prostate uh, cancer, whatever it is, or I have kidney failure, so that thought, that thought though is also a vibration, you know, it's just like a very stuck vibration which can manifest. So if you just feel that, <clears throat> if you feel the repressed feelings out of it and don't attach to that thought, you're dissolving that belief, yeah, and you're feeling out the repressed feelings. Remember, the rep repressed feelings are underpinning that belief. So when you have a lot of repressed feelings and a negative thought, it's really stuck on. But as you dissolve the repressed feelings, you're taking up the volcano of energy that's creating, it's like the, um, the repressed feelings are like the, uh, what's the right word, it's like the, it's like the thrust that makes them so, the belief so severe. Because if you didn't have a lot of repressed feelings around a belief, it would quickly vanish, and, and it, you could quickly let it go. So a belief is something that's very, very strong, it usually has a lot of, you know, to dissolve it. But if you have a belief which is very light, like, uh, uh, <clears throat> What's a light belief? Like, uh, you know, I like red. You know, if you've got a light belief that's like red, you know, probably to let that go is probably quite easy. You know, if you've got a belief like, uh, you know, I've got kidney failure, that's probably like a lot of repressed stuff you've got to feel out and just keep cancelling that for a long time before you can dissolve the, the emotion and the belief. So it's going to be a lot of work. Whereas, like, <clears throat> if I just had to let go of the idea that I, don't, I like red, or I don't like red, or whatever it is. That's probably like, you don't have to feel much out, and you can probably just cancel it for a little bit and it'll dissolve. So as you, but you can feel out illnesses just by doing feel the feelings, because as you feel out all the feelings, when, when you start to go up, when you feel out all your oppressed anger, guilt, and shame, and fear, then it's like you're tuning up to a higher vibration. And it's almost like these dense beliefs can't really live. You know, belief systems like, you don't, you know, cancer and AIDS, like I don't deserve to live, these kind of beliefs that you pick up with that vibration. And you start to dissolve it out. You're starting to feel quite happy and serene and you're enjoying the trees. So these beliefs don't really live at that frequency. So they'll start to just evaporate off. Um, and when you start to get into the higher frequencies, it's like you don't, also they don't support much thinking. Does that make sense? Like you start to get more and more into the present moment. You know, you have to be with a lot of repressed feelings, then you have a lot of thinking. And then these feelings like cancer and stuff, they, they live like that. They're like fish. I don't know, they're like sharks at the bottom of the ocean. As you start feeling out your feelings, you're tuning up to, you're tuning up to peace, serenity, love. You become more and more present. These, these dense thoughts 
they, they don't really live there. They find it very hard to st start living at that frequency. So they just dissolve off. They evaporate off. Even if you were doing the counseling, they start to evaporate off at these higher frequencies. So you can do that with the... Um, now, okay, so there's some extra stuff. Like when, when you have an illness, it's a belief system. Yeah? So it, it really is, you know, like uh, when Hawkins would let go of gout, you could like, because you know the medical belief system, like gout is like you have high uric acid in the blood. So it's just a belief system. There's like, gout is like the big overriding belief and there's sub-belief systems in that system. So gout should be like your high uric acid, when you eat too much protein, you get it and stuff like that. So you just cancel all the sub-beliefs and cancel that and it'll just dissolve off, you know. So he cancelled his belief in, in high uric acid levels and the high, uh, high uric acids went to normal. He cancelled his belief, you know, he had um, high cholesterol. He cancelled his belief in high cholesterol. His cholesterol went down. He cancelled his belief in adverse effects from food. And then he was eating, like, you know, sausages, eggs and beef burgers every day. And still his, his, his cholesterol was normal. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there's just belief systems. There's nothing out there in the world that has any power over consciousness. So as you're starting to, like, if you're feeling out, like, things like eczema or whatever, Sometimes, you know, these belief systems, you get flare-ups. But if you fill out the flare-ups, and cancel, in, I would cancel the beliefs, that, the, you know, like my gout attacks, they became less intense and less frequent as I felt them out and did the cancel beliefs. It's just like you get massive attacks and you fill them out for four hours. Then after a couple of years, they're like every several months and they go away in like half an hour or ten minutes. So that's how, how I experienced these flare-ups going off. So they just, and then they eventually they stop and you discharge from the clinic because there's not because you felt out all the repressed feelings you can actually when you cancel something an illness it comes to a point where you don't believe it like and at the same time you don't believe it you haven't got it it's a really really funny thing it's like oh yeah I used to have that I forgot I had that you know it's like in your consciousness it's like you don't have that you know you something you, you've forgotten it's it's like erased from your consciousness that you ever had it you can't remember you had it. You don't, you don't experience it any longer, it's like it, so it's kind of a mystical thing, like when you don't believe it, it's not there. It's sort of like the most odd thing, and when you've got it, like you believe it, oh god, you know, it's like, there's things here and it's like uh, flapping in my face, so. Aches and pains, you can definitely feel those out, you know, I mean, if you read all the authors, Louise Hay and, and stuff like that, and Hawkins did his, uh, some of the work, I mean, you know, like, the world is symbolic. You know, like uh, you got, uh, so classically, like I've got some courses out on Udemy, like back pain, you don't feel enough support, or you've you got, you got a pain in the neck, either life is a pain in the neck or, you're, or you're, one of your relatives is a pain in the neck, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, whatever it is, or doing life is a pain in the neck, so whatever it is, so you've got to, you've got to sort of can cancel, you cancel the belief. Yeah, you, you don't need to find it out, but they're, they're quite funny, you know, it's like, well, why did I get, you know, why did I get kidney failure, and, you know, I had, why that, why not something else, and then I went to an acupuncturist, and they said, he whispered in my ear, do you know, like, kidney, you know, kidneys is the emotion of fear, he said, oh, okay, so that's the reason why I just sort of twiddle onto, these, these are like from the collective, you know, too much fear, you probably bust out your kidneys, or, you know, if you're too angry, you do this and the various illnesses. So it's all quite fun. But you can feel it out because all of these things are part of the collective insanity that we all live in. It's, it's all not real. 